In today's video, we are talking about spaces and how could you remove spaces between the words in Power Query? Now, I'm sure you have heard of the trim function in Excel, but it doesn't quite work like the trim function in Power Query. So we'll take a look at the nuances and we'll try to remove spaces in between the words in Power Query and we shall have a lot of fun. Let's go. All right, people in Power Query here and working with some very simple three row data, we have some names. Uh, this is me, my son, and let's just have some fun together. Now, obviously, you can see that there are a bunch of spaces in there. There's some, uh, you know, starting spaces, some trailing spaces that you cannot see, and some spaces in between that we would like to remove. Now, one of the conditions that I'd like to keep is that the names should just have a standard one space, but anything more than one space should actually be gone. Now, you'll witness that this cannot be done using the trim function in Power Query. Let's just start with that. So I'm going to go to the add columns tab and create a custom column in the custom column. I'll start writing a function and the function that I will write is text dot trim. And I'm going to say, Hey, here is the names column in which you will find a couple of texts. Please trim that. I'm going to say, okay, what I get is that the starting spaces are removed. The trailing spaces, if there were any, they are also removed, but you can see that the spaces in between are still there. And I'd like to keep standard one space in between. Now the trim function in Power Query is just able to remove the preceding or the trailing spaces, but it cannot remove the extra spaces within the text. What do we do about that? Now I'm going to go ahead and start to revise my function. And I'm going to go ahead and say something like, Hey, I'd like to split this particular text with a space. So split it as many number of times as you would find a space. So this becomes one word, then these becomes a couple of words, and then this becomes another word space and another word, so on and so forth. Let's just see how can we do that. I'm going to use a function called text.split. So we have text.split and I'm going to say that please use the space as your delimiter. Once I do that, this is going to give me a list. And in the list, you're going to see that it has actually split uh, this into three different words. So Chandeep is the first one, then there was a space here. So this got as the second word and the third one is nothing but Chabra, which is my last name. All right. Now, what I would like to do in this particular uh, list that I have received is, th is that I'd like to cancel out in case there were anything more than one space. So if you take a look at the next one right here, you're going to see that in this list, we had a bunch of spaces in there and therefore it has actually split this into a couple of extra columns or extra values in here. And I'd like to remove all of that, right? So how do we do that? I'm going to go in this particular list that we have created. And I'm going to say that in this list, please do not have any of these blanks. Now, these are not spaces anymore because the space was used as a delimiter. These are just blanks and I'd like to just remove the blanks. I can use a very simple function called list dot select. And I can say that here is a list. And in this list, I would like to omit this particular blank selection or this particular blank value. And I'm going to say, hey, in each underscore should not be equal to a blank, right? It's not null, it's a blank, right? So I'm going to say here is a list. And in each item of this list, it should not be equal to a blank. That's all. I'm going to say, okay, and let's just take a look at what's the result of this list. Now this results gives me the three um, texts that I have. But if I combine the texts back, I should then add one space, which was my default requirement. So I'm just going to go back in this um, function that I'm writing. And I'm going to say that I'd like to now combine it back. But now this time I'd like to have one standard space back in there. So I'm going to say that text.combine asks you for a list. So the first part is definitely a list. And the second part is your separator. And my separator in this case is going to be a space. Beautiful. I'm going to close in the brackets and press OK. What I get is the text back, but this time there are no trailing spaces. There are no preceding spaces. And obviously we have one standard space everywhere. This is pretty awesome. Now, as of now, we've been able to solve the problem, but our solution is not really scalable. What if this was supposed to be done in a couple of queries that you have in your query right here? I mean, in your data model. And what if this was supposed to be done on multiple columns that how do you scale the work that you have done here? We're going to do that using a function. Let's go with a function. All right, people, if you've never worked with functions before, what functions allow you to do is they allow you to pack custom logic and combine multiple different formulas together to create a unique function of your own that can clean the data in a unique way and make it more scalable to clean that so that you don't have to write the code over and over again. Now, you will see that once we take a look at on this example. Now, I have a notepad here. This notepad contains the same 
uh, M code that I wrote in the custom formula up on the top. It's just that it's a bit formatted. That's why it might seem a little different, but it's the same code that we just wrote. Now, if you take a look at this particular uh, M code right here, in this M code, we asked the user to give us some couple of strings that we would want to clean. If you remember the trim function that I wrote just a while ago, in the trim functions, I inputted the name of the column, which I wanted to clean, which contained three strings that were eventually cleaned up. Similarly, when I'm creating this as a function and I don't know what is my input going to be, I'm going to ask the user, give me some texts to clean. But how do I ask the user, right? I'm going to create a variable for that. So let's just start to create this into a function. I'm going to go ahead and start to declare a variable and the variable name could be anything. So I'm going to say something like input text as a text. Now, let me just tell you what exactly is happening here. The input text is the name of the variable that I just declared, and you can declare any name that you feel like. Here, I am saying that, hey user, once you're giving me the input text, please provide me that text in the form of a text data type. It cannot be a number because all the functions that you're using here are all going to work with only texts. Now, once you have written that, you can just maybe write the rocket sign right here. Anything that succeeds, uh, the rocket symbol is going to convert it into a function, right? All right, now I'm gonna start to write my let statement. So I'm just gonna say a let and just call this as something like uh, clean data. That's the name of the step and that's the only step that you would need right here and we are pretty good to go. Now I'm just going to move this up. Now in the clean data step, I'm going to start to clean the data, but I would not start to clean the names column because I don't know what the user is going to give it to me to clean. So I would say that this formula that I have written right here, this formula, all of this is going to work on the user's input and the user's input is going to be captured in this input text variable that the user is going to give it to me. So I'm just going to maybe replace that and start to write something like input text. All right, pretty good. And I'm just going to maybe write the in statement and finally close the loop and say that this is going to be the clean data as an output. So just one single step and I do all of the same function work. I declare a variable on the top, which is where the user is going to declare you know, some texts that he would want to clean. I capture that text within my function and then I input that output right here. All right, pretty good. Now, where do we use this um, M code that we have written? We have to create a new query. So I'm just going to copy this M code right here. I'm going to go in the queries right here and I'm going to create a new and a blank query. In the blank query, I'll move over to the advanced editor and I'll delete everything and I'll paste my code right there. Let's just delete this and you know, kind of clean the code up. All right, pretty good. And I'm just going to click on done. And what we get is a function right here. You can see that the icon has also changed. Now the name is bad. I can just rename this. I've called my function as remove spaces and let's just start to use that particular function. I'm going to go back to table number one and I'll just delete this custom column that I just created. I'm just going to get rid of that and I'll now start to use the remove spaces function, which is where all of the logic that I just built a while ago, I could use that with a single formula called remove spaces. How do I do that? I'm going to go to the add columns tab and I'm going to maybe either create a custom column or I can invoke a custom function. So I'm just going to maybe for now create a custom column and I just find it easy. And I'm going to say that, hey, I would like to call a function that I have created. The name of that function is remove spaces and I can just maybe have that. And I'm going to say that this is going to ask me an input text. And what is that input text? That is going to be nothing but all the names that you have in the names column. I'm going to close the bracket and press OK. And what you get is cleaned text. And all that you have done is written a very simple function. This is pretty awesome. I'm not done yet because there is still room for scalability. If you take a look at the current query that we have been able to make, we are at the moment using a function cleaning just one particular column. So we reference the name column right here into our function and we clean that up. That's pretty easy. But what if we wanted to clean all the columns of the table or maybe multiple columns of the table all in one go using the function that we have created? Let me just show you a very interesting trick. So I'm going to get rid of this particular step and I'm going to duplicate this column. So I'm just going to maybe uh, say come right here and I'd say, hey, I would like to duplicate the column 
and I'd like to now clean both of these columns. How do we do that? I'm going to maybe create a new step and I'm going to start to write a function called table.transformcolumns. If you don't already know this function, I suggest that you take a look at the video that I have done explaining this function in greater detail in the past. But for now, just take a look. So I'm going to say something like, hey, I'm trying to transform all the columns of this particular table. And on all the columns of this table, the function that I'm trying to use is remove spaces, the function that I have made. How do I do that? I'm going to start to write something like table.transform columns. Once I do that, it is asking me, hey, what's the table in which you are trying to work with? So I'm trying to work with duplicated column, which is nothing but the previous step, uh, which is nothing but my table, which contains two columns. Now in this table, I would like to work with all the columns. Therefore, I leave the list of the columns as blank. That means I'm not particularly trying to choose one or two columns. I just want all the columns to be transformed. All right, I do that and I put a comma and says, hey, what's your function that you're trying to run. So the function that I'm trying to run is nothing but remove spaces. I do that and voila, what do we have? All the columns are now clean using the function that we have created using remove spaces. That is awesome. All right, that's been it. Let me know if you have any questions around this and I'll be glad to reply. Please put down your questions in the comment section. We obviously started out simple and we wanted to clean out our text and remove the unwanted spaces. We then learned how do you create a function and then we tried to make our function more scalable and try to apply that function to all the columns of the table. I'm sure some parts of the query or maybe the entire video that I have done discussing multiple tricks might have been useful to you in some or the other way possible to create more dynamic and more scalable queries of your own work. All right, let me know if you have any questions around this. In the end, a big shout about my tax and my Power Query training courses in case you are a beginner and you'd like to understand the fundamentals first and then move on to solving more difficult, more challenging problems even of your own data. I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be super awesome. Thanks so much for sticking around all this while and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Yeah.